In today's tutorial, we are going to create a very simple LSTM model. Uh, this LSTM model is used for sentiment analysis, which is the best example uh, to understand the LSTM. It is an NLP problem, which is natural language processing problem. So this model is very simple. We have just three layers, embedding layer, LSTM layer, and dense layer. So what is embedding layer? This layer maps each word in the vocabulary. And we use a 16-dimensional vector for this. And this allows the model to learn the meaning of words and how they are related to each other. So that what the embedding layer do. The next layer is LSDM. And after that, we have a dense layer. And uh, the vocabulary size parameter is 16. We use that for an average. And the activation function we use is sigmoid. So basically, the sigmoid parameter uh, in the dense layer, it specifies that the output model would be a sigmoid value, which could be from ranging from 0 to 1. And we can interpret this as a probability. So if the probability is uh, or the output of this LSTM model is greater than 0 0.5, we consider this as a positive and if it is less we'll consider that as a negative sentiment so what actually the problem is uh, the problem is very pretty simple so uh, uh, what we are going to do is that we will just uh, look at this data we created this data this is very short uh, and uh, uh, just for the demonstration purposes and I love this model and this sentiment is positive uh, this is terrible negative movie was great positive I don't like it negative and so on so forth and for the validation purposes you can see that uh, uh, there is nothing related and we have we already in introduced new words like the awful the awful word is not in our data set and uh, I can't believe how awful this is so I can't believe is also not in our data set. This was great experience overall, not recommended at all, and so on and so forth. These uh, strings would be validated and we will predict how accurate the sentiment is guessed by the model. So if I scroll down and show you the visualization, here you can see uh, that it uh, almost got everything. So for the negative, not recommended at all. Terrible customer experience. Uh, how, I can't believe how awful this is. And th this was a great experience overall. I really satisfied with the purchase and amazing quality and value. One of the best products I have ever bought. So all of these uh, words were not in our, most of the words were not in our training set. Okay. So now that we have our uh, data, we can uh, start uh, building our LSTM model. So how we do that? We simply convert the text um, in our array and the labels. And uh, the vocabulary size is just 50 for the demonstration purposes. And in the Kiros layer, we uh, get uh, the text vectorization. So what we do that we provide a max tokens, how much, how many uh, tokens could be. So maximum vocabulary would be a 50 uh, tokens. So the tokenizer would adopt this text. And after that, we create a sequence of this tokenizer. And uh, we pass the text to this tokenizer. And this will create a sequence. And we just print that. Uh, this sequence would be printed in this format, like you can see, this is a 10 by 4 shape and something. And uh, once we're done printing that, we just padded sequences. So there could be a uh, padding required because here you can see the length of the string is not consistent. So uh, there is a different uh, length of the strings. That's the beauty of text. So what we need to do here, we need some kind of padding so that the sequence would be of equal sizes. So this is a pre-processing step of the NLP. We can uh, get this layer under the Kiros API. So after that, we're done adding a padded sequence. 
we can create a model which is a sequential model and here you can see we created a sequential model and we create our first layer which is an embedding layer of 16 and then the LSTM which is a 16 as well finally over 1 1 means only one output so one output and that would be the activation with sigmoid so that would be the probability and after that we compile with the binary cross entropy and the optimizer is atom optimizer and the matrix we measure the accuracy uh, after that we convert uh, the labels to the numeric values so the positive is one and negative is zero we create numeric labels array for that and uh, once we uh, train this over 10 epochs, uh, we can create uh, also train uh, for 100 epochs. That's up to you. It is very fast because the ad set is very small and almost within few seconds, your model would be trained. So it is good to play with. Um, the accuracy is one because we don't have much data available. So that doesn't matter at all. We can save the model. Uh, with the text classifier model, model dot save function, it would create a folder and everything would be stored here in a raw format. So that's how you can save your model. So you can later retrieve. Uh, how you can retrieve uh, the saved model? You simply use tf.kiras.models.load model. So any model that is trained with a TensorFlow, you want to load that model. You can simply use the dot load model function, and you pass the name of the folder. Uh, here you can notice that there is no dot h5 or tf light or anything because it's a just pure model saved with the uh, tensorflow api and uh, next we are just creating only one simple string the product was amazing that's it and uh, the test sequence uh, we create a tokenizer and then we pre-process with the padded sequence. We create a padded sequence. And once our padded sequence is created, we we start a prediction. We uh, call the dot, dot predict. And we need it because uh, the array is um, a double matrix array. So you can simply uh, patch the 0, 0 index and that would be your prediction. And we, because this is a probability between 0 to 1, which is the output of a sigmoid activation function, you need to map that into a label. So how you do that, you only put a simple if-else statement. So if the prediction probability is greater than 0 0.5, you put the label as a positive, otherwise you put a negative. So you print uh, the test string is this and the prediction sentiment value with the confidence level is this. So the test string is the product was amazing and the predictive sentiment is positive because it is a confident 0.9% uh, that it is a positive sequence. So that's how it would, would work. Uh, after that we create, uh, we can validate uh, the uh, our model uh, what we need to do, we simply need to pass over validation data to a tokenizer. We need to create a parity sequence and simply call a predict uh, function of uh, your loaded model. And for everything in the predictions, you need to make sure that if the prediction is greater than 0 0.5, you need to put the label of positive. Otherwise, you need to put the label of negative for the prediction value in the validation data set. And you can plot this uh, by a simple matplotlib library and you can create a figure of uh, your desired size and you put the validation data, validation prediction of flattened model and the color. And if the sentiment is positive, you put a green color, otherwise a red. That's how you can put the colors on the bar graph. And we create a bar graph and put some labelings to it and we create a numeration uh, text on the plotting value and that's how the plot is uh, returned. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can visualize some results by uh, there are two more popular curves that you need to 
explain in your results uh, the train and validation loss curve this plot shows the loss of the model over the course of training so when you are training it will uh, plot the curves of how uh, the losses is emerge and uh, the train and validation accuracy curve because our data set is not very large so it would not be an ideal case the model could be accuracy is almost one which is not an ideal case either uh, when you train it on a large data set that accuracy would change and everything goes uh, on but for in our limited scenario the model is working pretty well and uh, here the mo if when you train the model you can patch a history of that model so all of these tabs these long texts are returned in an array of history so you can patch that and you can plot that history uh, with a loss and uh, you, uh, this is a training loss and balance for loss is simply a validation loss here you can see uh, the loss uh, the accuracy and the validation loss so you can fetch all of these with this label so from this dictionary data set so once that's done, you you can plot that. So here is our training validation loss curve. And uh, if you want to plot uh, side by side uh, the accuracy and loss curve, you can do that simply with the subplotting technique of matplotlib. And that's all on the uh, matplotlib library. So finally, 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 what you need to do, you may need to plot the ROC curve, um, which is not uh, um, so uh, uh difficult at all you simply call the roc curve function and provide uh, the true labels binary and validation predictions and it will plot the curve and here something the receiver operating practice six curves looks like so uh, that's uh, a visualization but the most important thing is the lsdm model itself so now you have a one a string based sentiment analysis lstm model ready for you so enjoy it and if you have any questions leave a command thanks you